Hey guys, welcome back. So this, of course, is my old Jeep CJ7, the one I'm making, the, or that I have made the taillight housings and put the LED bulbs in for that I'm trying to get that project done, and it's still fighting me. And my problem today is this hole back here and this grommet that came out of that hole. I can't see squat for the in the sun on the camera screen, so I'm only guessing you can see this. This grommet, I need to make another one. So that's what we're going to do today. We are going to go into Fusion 360. We are going to design this up. And we are going to print this out in the blue TPU that I have. So, Okay, so here we are in Fusion 360. And as always, before I begin this, I just want to say that while in some ways this is a beginner tutorial it's not really an absolute beginner tutorial I'm not going to tell you how to get the software install it I'm not going to tell you how to configure it to any great degree I may mention a couple times how to move around in it but you know there are absolute beginner tutorials out there if you need one then I would suggest you start there so as always when I design something for the 3D printer I like to design it the way it's going to be printed that way if I post it to someplace like Thingiverse I don't have to tell people how they have to rotate it or listen to them piss and moan at me about um, how I am um, how it didn't print because it wasn't rotated correctly so let's start we're gonna click create a sketch I'm going to click on this bottom surface, which 3D, which Fusion calls the top, because I see that as my print bed. Oh, also, before I go any further, as always, I have added some parameters in. So, modify, change parameters, click the plus to add a user parameter, and I added these parameters in. OD top, OD hole, ID hole, height full, OD bottom, OD taper, height top, and thickness metal. I don't know how well they're going to work, but I like to start with something. So, I think this is going to have to be printed top down, because that's the largest side. I don't know how that little inset for the sheet metal is going to print, but I'm going to try it and see what happens. If it doesn't print, what I'm probably going to do is make it wider and then add a chamfer to it to try and get it to print. But I'm going to try and print it with support first. Again, it's awful small. Not sure how that's going to work, but we're going to try it. So we're going to create a center diameter circle. We're going to create it right here, and we're going to come out OD and this was OD top and enter to lock it in and now I want to I want to um I want to extend that up into the 3D space because right now it's just a 2D circle so I'm going to hit E to extrude and I'm going to extrude it up and the amount that I want to extrude it is going to be height top because again we're working from the top toward the bottom so height top and we're going to hit enter to lock that in I think the very last thing I'm going to do is put the hole in it now you may have noticed from the picture when I was out at the Jeep that this thing is cupped at the top and then there is a projection in the center that the wire loom goes through I'm not going to recreate that. I don't know why that was like that. I think the taper is there on the outside to make it easy to pop in from the factory. But that that inset in the top, that may have something to do with water. It may have just been an attempt to save material. I don't really know. But anyway, I'm not going to fool with it. So that's the very top piece. Now what I need is I need another center circle there for the where the where the sheet metal groove is so let's once again we're going to click create a sketch we're going to click on this top surface it's going to be a center diameter circle and this is going to come out it's going to be another OD and this is OD hole if I remember correctly I believe that is the correct one because it's the only one that starts with OD that makes sense and enter now that needs to come up itself so we're gonna hit E to extrude click on that and that's gonna come up and I called that that's another height uh, no it's not that's thickness metal isn't it thickness metal there we go I don't know why I called it that it kinda made sense at the time and we'll hit enter there now I need thickness, I need OD bottom 
for next. So we're going to draw another center diameter circle. So we're going to draw a sketch on here. And it's going to be another center diameter circle. And we are going to come out OD bottom. OD bottom. Right? That looks right. We are going to hit E to extrude. And now this one gets a little bit, a little bit weird on us. Because this one has that taper on it. So let's extrude it up. And we're going to extrude this up height height bottom. Isn't that, isn't that what I called it? Whoops. H E I height bottom. I didn't make a height bottom parameter or I called it something different. Let me go in and measure that and see what I did. That should be got the part sitting here on the decks next to me as I am want to do. That's going to be about I don't know what did they make that about 20 millimeters I guess I think I'm gonna make it less I don't really think it needs to project down as far as they made it um, again I think it was only there to make it easy to shove the thing in in the factory at factory so let's go back into my modifying parameters because I did think I had made one for that change parameters height full OD bottom OD taper that's what I called it. I called it OD taper. Okay. <laughs> I never remember all these. I'm telling you. So this is going to go up OD taper. I don't know why I called it that. It should have been height bottom. But okay, as long as I know what it is. But I want to put a taper on that. So taper angle. Let's come over here. It wasn't very much. And you know what? It went up. And you know what? Oh, I'm looking at it now. It went up straight for a while and then tapered didn't it all right all right that's not going to work so let's cancel that and let's come up um that's about three millimeters so let's add a parameter modify change parameters i didn't see that before and we're going to call we're going to click the plus to add a parameter and let's call this um height bottom and we'll call it straight and we'll call it three millimeters and now let's go to OD taper and let's change that to make something that makes more sense um, let's call it height bottom taper how about that that makes more sense okay all right so now we're going to hit E to extrude again. We're going to go there and we are going to come up height bottom straight. And if you've never done it before, the reason why we put these parameters in like this is because it makes it easier to um, come in and change things later. And that doesn't look right to me. Why doesn't that look right to me? That's not right. Okay. What did I do wrong? I did something wrong. Okay, let's go back a couple. I'm going to go Control Z back. Okay, I see, I see. I see what I did. I only pulled up. Let's go E to extrude again. Okay, I need that and that. There we go. And now we're going to come up OD. Nope, it wasn't. It was height. Height wasn't it oh you know what I undid my blasted hot dog on it I keep forgetting when I when I go back I undo my change my parameter changes as well so I want to go in and change this OD taper to height height bottom taper and then I want to add another one for height bottom straight okay and that one's going to be three enter and whoops what did I just do expression should have been three okay I don't want it to be 31 three height bottom straight is three okay now this one here I don't think that's supposed to be 31 Height bottom taper. I don't think that's supposed to be 31. Let me measure that again real quick. Um, yeah, nowhere near 31. Um, call it 15. 15. Enter. Okay. 
Okay, so let's go with that for now. And now we are going to go E to extrude. We're going to do that and that. Come on. There we go. And we're coming up height, bottom, straight, right? And enter. And there we go. Now I have my spot where the sheet it pops into the sheet metal. Now we're going to draw another, make another sketch here. This is nothing but a series of circles. A lot of this stuff is nothing but series of circles and extrudes. And that's one of the things that makes them so quick and easy. All right, so center diameter circle there and there. And this is going to be OD, OD bottom, right? I, do, I, I don't need to do that, do I? I don't need to do that. Let's go Control z out of that. I don't need to do that. All I need to do is extrude this up again. Right? Right? I think so. Let's try it. Oops. Come on. Get away. Sometimes you just got to bang escape on this three or four times to get it to do what you want. So let's hit extrude. Let's. We're going to extrude this surface. And we are going to extrude it up. Um, this is height. Whoops, what's happened? What happened? Alright, you didn't do what I wanted you to do again. I shouldn't be in a sketch. Why am I in a sketch? Okay. Alright, so we're going to hit E to extrude. We're going to extrude this up, and it's going to be height, bottom, taper, right? Right. And that should be what I called the 15, but we want to put a taper angle on this. So let's come over here to taper angle and let's call it 10 degrees and let's see what that looks like. I'm just going to take a guess at it. 10 degrees. How about minus 10 degrees? Minus 10. You know what? I think that's all it really needs. I don't think it needs to be any more complex than that. It's just to make it small enough to so it shoves into the hole without a battle. And we're going to say OK. And I don't even know why it needs to be that long, to be honest with you, except that's what they did at the factory. I could probably make that half that distance, and it would probably be fine. You know what? Let's do that. Let's make that half that distance. And we may make the taper even a little bit a little bit more um, extreme. Not that it's extreme now, but... So let's go back into change parameters. Let's change this height bottom taper from 15 millimeters to 8 and say OK. Uh, that's way better. It doesn't need to be that that high. And let's change that taper a little bit more. And we're going to come back down in our timeline to this extrude. And we're going to say Edit Feature. And we're going to change that 10. Then let's make it 15 and see what that looks like. Minus 10 to minus 15. I like that. That looks good. A lot of this, a lot of this when you're trying to recreate something, you get your measurements in there, but a lot of it is just putting numbers in and saying, I don't like that. And then change it and saying, yeah, that looks good. So there we go. So what else do we need? We need the hole in the middle, obviously. So let's do that next. And I could do this either on the top or the bottom. This in here worries me a little bit. I'm not sure how that's going to print. I'm going to turn support on and print one. And I may tell Cura to make it make. I may not turn support on and I may tell Cura to make it printable and see what it does. As long as it pops in the hole fairly securely, I don't really care. But you know what? Let's try, I don't know. I'll have to think about it and see what I want to try first. Let's put the hole in the center. We are going to sketch on here because it doesn't matter what side we sketch on for this. We're going to make a center diameter circle. We're going to come out and we're going to call this OD hole, I think is what I called it. OD hole. Uh, that's way too big. Oh, that's way too big. Didn't I give a center hole diameter? I thought I put a parameter in for that. Change parameters. Height, thickness, metal. I didn't... OD hole. ID hole. ID hole is what I called it, because it's a 5 eighths hole, or, or roughly 14 millimeters. So, let's let's go control z back one control z back one let's do our hole again or circle one more time and this is id hole ha that's better and enter to lock it in we're going to hit e to extrude or q to push pull it'll figure out the correct one for us we're going to click on it we're going to drag it out like this now as i've mentioned before 
you can drag it out like I did and it'll be okay I mean drag it out a foot and it won't matter but what I like to do is come over here to distance and change my distance to to object and then change it to this this flat surface here I could use all in this case too and it wouldn't matter but I just want my hole to be I want my hole to be all the way through no matter how much if I come back and change the thickness or anything I still want the hole to go all the way through yeah I could drag it out a foot and the hole would still be all the way through but there are some things that you do that that's going to cause you grief on later and it's kind of sloppy so I don't want to do it anything else I need to do here I think I'm going to put a I don't really need a fillet here I don't need one there because I'm going to lube this thing up and shove it into that hole. I think the only really place I want to fill it is here. I'm not going to put one here because that will collect water. So actually what I would like is a little bit of a hump there. Um, I don't think I'm going to put one in because I'm going to silicone seal it anyway probably once I get the wires in place. So um, And it's on a loom. And I live in Arizona. so <laughs> And it's got a roof on it. So um, yeah, let's just let's just say let's just say fill it, and let's just put a fillet on this one, right there, and let's just say three and see what three looks like. Eh, you know what, three looks pretty good. I'm gonna say okay to that, and pretty much there's my part. So let's see how it prints. I'm gonna take this. Oh, next step in case I have never shown you guys, we have to first give it a name. So I'm gonna click save. And I'm going to amaze again that we're still using floppy disk icons for save. And I'm going to call it Jeep oh, Wiring Grommet. And let's call it Rear. Let's call it, that's the driver's rear, so left rear. Um, just so I know what it is later on down the road. Say save. The name should change over here. And there it is and now I'm just going to right click that name and I'm going to say save as STL and I'm going to click OK to all of this because I've never had any need to change any of it it's going to save to my desktop see if I still have a folder for my taillight project uh, it looks like I got rid of it nope nope there it is we're going to save it in the Jeep taillight folder and say save and we're going to minimize fusion and let's get Cura up and I have Cura 4.6. I haven't started it in a few days. Watch it'll tell me there's a new version of it. Oh, oh I have 4.6.1. Let's see what happens and then we will go ahead and load in that part. And then I'll decide whether I'm going to add support in for that little gap, that little overhang, or whether I'm going to tell Cura to make it printable. And I'm going to do a preview I'm going to say make it printable and do a preview and see what it's going to do to it because I think that does show me. Come on, Kira, where are you? Hello, there we go. And we're going to go file and open file. And we're going to go to desktop and Jeep taillight and Jeep grommet jeep wiring grommet there it is there and there's our part it immediately appears the way i want it to print and i like that and um i'm just wondering my little my little fillet there on the corner should not prevent that from printing let's um turn on let's see what our settings are i want to change this to chuck tpu where's my t oh i'm on a10m i need to switch a10m to creality ender 3 And let's see if I have my Chuck TPU setting here. And I'm either blind or I don't see it. I hate it when it, uh, I update and it loses my profiles. Darn it. Yeah, it's gone. So you know what? For now, I'm just going to go Chuck PC, Chuck PETG. I guess I'm just going to have to use the PLA setting for now and I'll have to come in and modify the speed and temperatures and things here. But first, before we do anything, let's go to, let's go to, I don't need a 10, ah, why did all this stuff, I hate new versions of Cura. I don't need a three line brim. Uh, 
so special modes a spiralized outer contour wasn't that where oh there's make overhang printable let's take a look at it and see if we can see what it's going to do to it nothing to show because you need to slice first that would be correct of course we need to slice first all right let's see if we can see you see what it's going to do it's going to it's going to can you see that it changed my gap here it changed it. it gave me a little bit of a i'm going to leave it like that because i don't really care it should still pop in the hole so um i'm going to go ahead and fix my settings and save another chuck tpu because i don't know what happened to the other one it's not there anymore i hate that oh no there it is there it is i just didn't scroll down my bad i'm sorry cura Jeez, i'm sorry ultimaker no i'm not i'm not really sorry okay so let's slice again <laughs> And there it is again. The colors even changed. How fun. Okay, I think that's going to be absolutely fine. Because all I really want that gap there for is so it kind of pops into the sheet metal. And let's say save the... Let me take a quick look at it. Cook at it. Make sure that nothing is hosed up. Um, point 0.2 is good. All that's okay. That seems like a... Two hours seems like an awful long time to print that. to 20 70 oh, I've got the print speed turned to 25 that's why it's so long um, let's drag this down and take a look and make sure nothing looks weird oh, I don't want triangles infill pattern cubic how did that get set to cubic that's better okay still two hours but nonetheless that looks better I like that a lot better okay I don't see anything wrong with that so we're gonna save that let me find a I won't keep you on here while I do that I'm going to find a card to save that to and um, I'm gonna get it printed and I'll be okay right I thought I'd pop out here to where I've got my original Ender 3 real quick just for those of you who are new to my channel and don't know what I'm gonna be printing this on this is an Ender 3 but some of the changes on this printer I mean the cooling thing there is nice but it's not required to print TPU. Uh, same with this guide. It's not required to print TPU. This blue Foxmart TPU. The hole in the the hole in the spool is so small. I did have to print a new spool holder because the stock one it won't sit on. And um, other than that, all you really need to make sure is that your extruder mechanism here is working correctly. The stock Ender 3 one, it, and I don't know what the current shipping ones are like, but the original one sucked. This pivoting arm had no sleeve in it, so the, the screw that held it down had to be let loose. Otherwise, it would bind, and the spring on it totally sucked. Other than that, it would print TPU completely stock. This one, the board inside it, has been flashed to stock Marlin, but again, you don't need that to print TPU. And the Foxmart TPU, as you see, it is really flexible. So um, if, if your printer will print this, it'll print just about any flexible. So with that being said, let's let this finish and let's see how this works for us. Okay, so it's all done. Here it is. Let's take a look at it. I think it turned out really nicely. I don't know if you can see the nice little groove we have down there to pop into the sheet metal. Um, came out beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And um, of course it's nice and flexible. So I think it's gonna I think it's gonna pop in there really well. I actually might have been able to use a stand, I don't know. It's pretty flexible all around. I don't know if you can see it depressing there as I squeeze it. There you can. Um, but yeah, far sight nicer looking than this thing. So all we have to do is see if it fits. Let's go do that now. Okay, so here we go. For the record, I did um since I am eventually going to be Splicing in new plugs and wires for here. I don't have the, the plugs yet, but I want to get this grommet done So just for the record I did put a cut across here so I can get this on without cutting the wires now Because I'm really not sure where I'm going to cut them yet. So let's see how this thing fits in that hole 
get some of the dirt away from back there. This thing has sat for a few years and it's um, gotten pretty dusty and dirty. Most of the stuff you see is I sprayed some anti-rust on it and that's that, in fact I brushed it on, that's that dark grayish color that's on everything. So I'm going to pop that on there like that and let's see if this thing fits in there. Nice fit. Wow. And there it is. <laughs> that is a nice fit. Ah, excellent. Excellent. Look at that nice shiny blue back in there. As a friend of mine used to say, it looks like a diamond in a goat's ass. So, anyway, that's all done. Version 1 work. That doesn't happen every day. But you know what? Celebrate when it does. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to get on with this project. I've got to splice those um, new connectors in. And um, then I'm going to get the taillights themselves mounted. Then I'm going to get the Jeep covered up. Except for the taillight housings. Because we're going to test to see how ABS works through the the summer sun because the sun's going to be shining right on him here. Uh, please like and subscribe and all that stuff and I'll catch you guys the next time. Bye for now.